Hey guys, welcome back to Long War Air 101. This is episode 3 and we're going to be talking about Raiders in April. Uh, somewhat controversial subject and a pretty complicated one as well. So a Raider can deal 27.5% of an Interceptor's health with a non-crit. So we probably want to abort around about 27.5-28% health. Uh, again, like with scouts, we're going to risk being crit while at low health and losing an interceptor. It's only a 5% crit chance. They don't even have to hit for max damage, so they may not kill you. And the amount of fire that you get in return at them for that risk is well, well, well worth it in terms of bringing out to bring the UFO down. Uh, stingrays and avalanches are approximately equally effective against raiders, but stingrays are far less variable, which is a really interesting thing and i'll explain what that means very shortly three intercepts on aggressive will usually be enough to bring a raider down and raiders typically do stay up long enough for three or more intercepts once you get like four or five intercepts especially if you're using stingrays uh you're getting close to 100 percent kill rate and you need to keep in mind that you typically have to fight four scout missions, those can be small scouts or raiders, and one hunt, which is going to be a fighter, in April. So you should watch out for depleting your air force, you don't want to lose yourself a satellite. Alright, um, I said aggressive here, so first thing I want to show you, this is stances, this happens to be using stingrays, but stingrays and avalanches are roughly... Uh, comparable at least in terms of average result so you can see defensive stance on average we just don't deal enough of the ufo's health per intercept less than a quarter of it we need to do better than that we don't take a whole lot of damage though i just made that bigger somehow okay now it's bigger i guess um there we go Unbalanced, we're getting closer, like, we probably have about 50% kill rate sending three interceptors on balance mm -hmm. because we're dealing about a third of the interceptor's health, but then aggressive is definitely where we get the most damage. You are eventually going to find situations where aggressive stops being where you deal the most damage because you're just not able to stay in contact with a UFO for long enough, but early in the game, typically the UFOs aren't dealing enough damage and aggressive is going to be the correct stance to be sending on. I'm going to show you the difference between avalanches and stingrays next. This is three intercepts with avalanches. You can see on average we're killing most of the time, 73% of the time kill rate. 32% uh, UFOs destroyed, you know, plus or minus three or four probably on that number. That's my guess. Um, Observe how many intercepts just went absolutely terribly, though. Look at this red dot. That's three intercepts, and so far we've dealt, like, less than 20% of the UFO's health. Avalanches have a lot of variance involved in them. You can see the alternate side of the story. Sometimes you get a ridiculous intercept and kill the intercept, or kill the UFO in one intercept. We've got a blue dot here, where on the first intercept we were able to kill with avalanches. So that's a pretty widespread. Um, stingrays, on the other hand, are much more consistent. You see, with three intercepts, we almost always more than half killed the UFO. Um, actually, somebody went absolutely godlike with stingrays and killed it in one intercept. But, hey, that's just good for him. Uh, overall, though, we do end up with basically the same result. We kill it. 73% of the time with three interceptors. So the difference is going to be minimizing how many red dots are way up in the stratosphere here. And stingrays, you can see far, far, far fewer times you'll have a UFO which isn't going to go down to the fourth intercept reliably. Whereas with avalanches, you have a considerably larger cluster of UFOs in this range of health. Um... So 32% destruction rate with avalanches and 24% destruction with stingrays as well. Overall, I would recommend that if you're going to send with only one interceptor type, send with stingrays. You're going to destroy it less, which generates more crash missions, which is great. You're also more reliably going to be able to bring it down with a fourth or fifth interceptor. 
However, once again, we have a situation where stingrays are very consistently overkilling it by a good amount. So the clusters for stingrays, they're hard to see because there are more shots fired overall, but they go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven here. And the seventh cluster is a good amount past, uh, past zero health. So what you can do again is go for a mixed intercept. This gets your stingray cluster closer to zero because you're dealing, you know, one or two hits with an avalanche, which helps you get that sixth stingray cluster over the 0% health line. And in my sim, this brought percentage of kills down to 21%. Um, that's actually a fairly reliable number because it isn't binary, it's, uh, it's a granular thing. For every intercept where we kill, there's a percent of the time that that kill would have been destroyed. So it, it actually does get pretty reliable. And this, this really is an improvement in destroying UFOs. Basically the same kill percent. This is within a margin of error of just being identical to the last number. So yeah, sending an avalanche first and then stingrays might be a good idea. Another thing that sending an avalanche first and then stingrays does is if you get a really good avalanche interception, you can know for sure that you're bringing the raider down. If you get a terrible avalanche interception, maybe you just let the raider go. So if you're not willing to commit four or five interceptors to this raider and like you only have three ready to send, maybe send an avalanche first. And that way, if you get a few good hits, you can send the stingrays and get it almost all the time. And if you don't get any hits, you know, just lay off now. Or if you send stingrays, three stingrays in that situation, you're very unlikely to get a point where you know for sure, gee, I should stop now. So it's going to cost you more interceptive damage. Oh, okay. wait. Uh, the next big thing, though, is do we actually want to attack raiders in April? Because we don't have to. Um, we could spend our money on other stuff and not buy a bunch of interceptors and just let the raiders go. It wouldn't end the game or anything. It doesn't cause us to lose. Um, I think the answer is definitely yes. We should definitely be trying to kill raiders. And I've tried to explain it in a cost versus reward comparison here, but it's a very, very complicated game, XCOM, with the strategic and tactical layers intertwining and a huge number of dimensions in which you can develop. XCOM typically only has positive expectation plays, but it can only make so many of them. So for example, building scopes is positive expectation because you gain aim on your soldiers. Buying interceptors is positive expectation because you can shoot down more UFOs. Building alloy plate is positive expectation because you gain hit points. So just showing you that this is positive expectation doesn't prove that you have to do it because you don't have enough resources to do all of those things. You have to try to choose the one that's the most positive expectation. And if you find that you just lose every mission unless you build alloy plates and scopes, one, learn the tactical matter, came better. Two, that's really weird. Those are small increases in strength, so it doesn't make any sense to me. But three, if that were the case, probably you should be building those and not buying more interceptors. I just don't believe that that's the case for almost anybody. Uh, so the cost is going to be damage on three interceptors, which has a variable cost. And that's very hard to define because it depends on how many interceptors you have left and how many UFOs are left to come during the month. But as long as you keep on top of knowing those numbers, you should have a general idea. Like if you've got three interceptors left and you can't buy any more and there are three more scouts coming, probably you should le let the raider go because you're going to need those to shoot down the small scouts, which are easier to handle. Uh, on the other hand, if you have six fresh interceptors just hanging around, like you had to buy two more in March because you took a bad intercept and they're all repaired now and ready to go, yeah, 100% try to kill a raider. Uh, risk of interceptor death. In my sims, it ended up being about $28.50 for killing a raider. So that's every time an interceptor dies, we have to pay 200 And there is... Actually, this is wrong, I think. That number is higher than it should be. It's more like 3% chance of death per intercept, not 5%. So an, an absolute upper bound is going to be 30 bucks for a chance of interceptor death, we'll say. Um, the thing about um, the cost is you may have to buy another interceptor, but it's not exactly like a cost, because then you have another interceptor, right? 
So it's forcing you to make a resource transfer from dollars to more interceptors, but then you do have more interceptors. You'll have to pay maintenance on them earlier. There are costs, there are costs, but the reward, the reward is huge. Uh, I simmed with destruction percents and I'm saying that we're going to destroy about 25% of the time, even though ideally we might be able to get that down to more like 20. And that gives us 3750 expectation from destructions of UFOs. And then we also have a bunch of UFO components and alloys and illyrium and floaters and stuff. Uh, when we generate a crash site, which I said was 56% of the time, you can probably get that higher though. Again, this is assuming you only have three interceptors. So this will be a much higher number if you have four, for example. Uh, that adds up to 179 bucks, I said. Uh, 800 experience. It's really difficult to quantify that. Obviously, it's valuable. I decided that's like two or three level ups at this stage of the game. And each level up is giving you considerably more stats than a scope. But you can't bring that soldier who leveled up on every mission. So if a scope's worth 70 bucks and a level up's maybe worth 100 bucks worth of stats probably even more than that. Um, but you can only bring the soldier every third or fourth mission. I said maybe 150 bucks. So a crash site, I think, is worth around $330. If I could choose to buy a crash site for $330 in the strategic game, I would be unsure whether to say yes or no would be about, about an equal decision for me. Uh, overall, that adds up to an expectation of 222 dollars worth of stuff including putting a dollar value on experience and a dollar value on uh like alloys and things even though you may not sell those uh on average when you're fighting a raider with three interceptors ready to go versus uh 2850 in clear costs and perhaps being forced to buy another interceptor or two earlier than you'd want to but you're going to need to buy them anyway that's a really, really, really good return on investment right there. And so I think that this is clearly a good play, and I think you should definitely be trying to make it. I think it's a better play than building early workshops and getting lower costs on building items. I think it's a better play than building early labs to get research done qu more quickly. Although, you know, you can make both plays. <laughs> you don't have to not build labs or workshops. Um, I even think this is a better play than getting your satellite uplink and satellites going in March and April. Honestly, if you find that you don't have enough resources to shoot down raiders in April, I think you should not build a satellite uplink or satellites in March and get enough resources to shoot down raiders in April. Because this is a gigantic amount. That's more than the countries we're going to give you in funding. It's It's huge. So yeah. That's Raiders in April. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. Maybe we'll talk about fighters or something, but this is probably the most controversial UFO decision you'll have in the entire game. So I wanted to give it a good talking, and I hope to see some opinions of your own in comments somewhere. All right, I'll see you guys next time.